How's it going? So this week's video is supposed to be part two of the 3D metal printer, but I didn't order any of the electrical components in time. And since Radio Shack is closed forever, moment of silence. I need to stall. So lately I've been pretty interested in piezoelectric crystals. And if you don't know what that is, it's what you find in a barbecue lighter, also in quartz watches, I think some radios. But basically it's a crystal that has a structure that when it gets compressed, it creates a voltage. So I think there's quartz, tourmaline, and some kind of salt. I don't know. But in quartz at least, the crystal structure is positively charged silicone and negatively charged oxygen and when it's compressed, it moves them around in a way that moves the average of the charges apart, creating a voltage potential. At least that's how I understand it. Steve Mould has a really good video about it. Check it out if you're interested. It's cool. Well, I wanna try and play with these, see if we can get some kind of usable voltage out of it, just using quartz crystals. Now, this is not a free energy machine. I'm not trying to get rectified here. This is just a really cool property and I want to play with it. Then again, maybe if I get rectified, I'll get more views. You know what? Today we're building a totally 100% free energy device harvested from crystals. It hurt me a little bit to say that out loud. So I got a few crystals from my dear sweet mother. And in order to clamp them in place, I need one that's kind of squarish, like this guy. So, I'm so sorry, Mom. Oh! Got him. Now we need a way to hold this in place securely as we compress the crystal, and also a way to hook contacts up to it so we could read a voltage. I figure we can do that in one shebang with this cute little vise. We need to electrically isolate the jaws from the body of the vise, and maybe add some copper plates on there. So, quick little bit of lasering. Cut out some acrylic on the laser and some strips of copper. I've sanded one side of the copper and both sides of the acrylic pieces with some pretty aggressive sandpaper. And now we just gotta epoxy these to the jaws of the vise. And the only redeeming quality about winter is it turns your five minute epoxy into six minute epoxy. A Little bit less anxiety when working with it. And look at that. We have a project that clamps itself while the epoxy sets. This is peak efficiency. Yeah, I'm ready for this epoxy to set up now. Yeah, winter sucks again. Man, look at this. It's like a mother lion holding her young. Aww. In hindsight, I should have added little, little terminals to these pieces of copper. Ah, oh, man. It just won't bond. New plan. That'll do. Just gotta make sure to use the tiniest number 10 screw I can find. Uh, as you can see, I've added some screw terminals. The screws are short enough to where they're not actually tusti tu tusting. They're not actually touching the cast iron. Got it hooked up to the meter. Let's do this thing. All right, man. Let's see it. Eh? Ah? Dude. It seems like we're getting something. I don't have an oscilloscope. But these are the best readings we're gonna get right now, but it seems pretty correlated. Do I give it a big whack? Oh, -ho! big whack. We peaked at 100. Little taps. 20 to 30. What's this? Millivolts? I think it's working. Well, as you can see, if we totally ignore this part, this is free energy. Now just pretend you don't hear that sound. Free energy, man. How about that? So I've gone ahead and put together a full bridge rectifier. Take the AC voltage from the crystal and convert it to a DC voltage. I've stuck a bigger crystal in there for the, uh, ooh, shiny factor. The meter's reading DC now. Let me just position my head to where it gets rid of that glare on the meter. Here we go. Look at that. Let's try and charge a capacitor. So, with the capacitor in line, we're able to get higher voltage spikes off of this thing. Now, we're still in millivolts. I'm starting to think we're not gonna get anything even uh, slightly usable out of this, but I'll be damned if I don't try. <laughs>
you could probably tell during that montage, this is not gonna be safe at all. So we got our little rotor here. This is gonna spin around and just keep whacking the crystal. Um, yeah, this is a really stupid idea. We're all hooked up. I'm standing far, far away. Do it. Oh, get out. Something happened. I'm too scared to get close enough to see what the meter's reading. But I'm too scared to let this run for a long time. <laughs> this is terrifying. Oh man, the motor already came loose of its mounts. All right, fix the motor mount, although I wish I hadn't. God, I hate it. I think we spiked around 50 millivolts. That's more than we've gotten before. I've thrown an LED on there. See what we can see. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> so this thing, absolutely terrifying. It's not really in the spirit of magic crystals, not very zen. So we need to make it a little less scary. While I am scared of spinning metal blades continually getting sharpened on a quartz crystal, I'm not as scared of a line trimmer. So I bored out this bolt so we can shove it on this shaft. And we're basically going to have a weed whacker whacking a crystal. And then I want to make some sort of enclosure so anything flying off won't go straight into my eye. Let's do it. Got my little weed whacker head stuck on there. Let's give it one more test before I'm closing it. Just, you know, one, one last little flash of danger. It's perfect. I love it. To make our safety shield, I need to bend a 12 inch circle into this. So, let's see if this old slip roller wants to actually do something. Oh, that's in the way. Hold on. Who designed this thing? Close enough for me. So the way it's looking, what I thought was gonna be the back of the machine is slowly becoming the front of the machine. So, obviously need a new name. Now to get this bend just right, I have these coupling nuts on here. I'm just gonna weld them in place one by one and hope that this thin piece of acrylic can hold the tension of the metal trying to spring back out. Now that this thing's all safed up, we can run it without safety glasses. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That is so much less terrifying. Let's stick the meter on and see if we're actually slapping that crystal. Let's give her. We're getting some dang power out of this thing now, man. Climb it down, this is ridiculous. Man, and the bump feed works. As you can clearly see, free energy. A whopping 200 millivolts of it. <laughs> that is beautiful. I love it. All right, check it out, y'all. managed to squeeze half a volt out of this thing. Now the problem is we need about 1.5 to get anything from these LEDs. What can we do with half a volt and probably no current? Hmm. I googled it. Dang. Well, that got a little ridiculous. Oh man, I'm dirty. I act like I'm not always dirty. <laughs> so, we were unable to do anything at all with this thing, but what we did do is harvest some sort of voltage by slapping a crystal with a weed whacker, which, oh, frickin' air compressor, which I think is kind of cool. Now, obviously, this is probably the least efficient piezoelectric system 
in existence. And with some of the little piezo buzzers, there are people that, that have made things to light up LEDs and charge capacitors and blah 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 and that's kind of where all the free energy claims come from. But yeah, I thought it was a pretty cool property and I thought it'd be fun to explore it a little bit, so that's what I got for this week. If you like what you saw, leave a good old banger. Think about subscribing and thank you for watching.